In this podcast episode, Andrew Huberman discusses the topic of peptides. Peptides are small proteins made up of chains of amino acids, ranging from 2 to 100 amino acids in length. They play a crucial role in various biological processes within the body. Peptides are increasingly being used for tissue healing and repair, particularly in muscle and connective tissues. When injuries occur, such as strains, tears, or breaks, peptides can aid in the rejuvenation and repair of these tissues. One of the most talked about peptides is BPC-157, also known as Body Protection Compound 157. It stimulates angiogenesis, the development of new blood vessels, which is essential for providing additional blood supply to the injured area. This process allows for the delivery of growth factors that further promote the rejuvenation of different cell types, aiding in the repair of muscles, ligaments, and tendons. This peptide has a long history of use in promoting tissue healing and repair, with some historical accounts even mentioning the use of gastric juices to preserve severed fingers or hands for later grafting. While the exact mechanism of how BPC-157 works is not fully understood, it is believed to promote angiogenesis and fibroblast migration to the site of injury, leading to faster tissue repair. Another peptide that is gaining attention for tissue rejuvenation and repair is thymosin beta-4, or TB500. This peptide is known for its ability to promote stem cell proliferation and extracellular matrix growth, both of which are essential for tissue healing and repair. While the exact mechanism of action of thymosin beta-4 is still being studied, it is believed to play a crucial role in promoting tissue regeneration. In addition to their role in tissue rejuvenation and repair, peptides can also have effects on metabolism and growth. One of the key hormones involved in metabolism and growth is growth hormone, which is naturally produced by the pituitary gland. Growth hormone plays a crucial role in promoting higher metabolism, fat loss, and muscle growth. However, as we age, the production of growth hormone decreases, leading to a decline in these beneficial effects. Another hormone that is closely related to growth hormone is insulin-like growth factor 1, IGF-1, which is produced by the liver in response to growth hormone. IGF-1 has similar effects to growth hormone and is involved in tissue repair, energy production, and overall feelings of vitality. Together, growth hormone and IGF-1 play a crucial role in maintaining metabolism, promoting fat loss, and supporting muscle growth. There are two main categories of synthetic peptides that stimulate the release of growth hormone in the body. Category 1 peptides, such as CJC-1295, tesamorelin, and surmorelin, mimic naturally occurring growth hormone releasing hormones and are FDA approved for specific medical conditions. These peptides are known to increase growth hormone and IGF-1 levels, leading to benefits like muscle growth, fat loss, and improved sleep quality. On the other hand, Category 2 peptides, including epimorelin, hexarelin, and GHRP2-6, through six, work by stimulating the release of ghrelin, a hunger-inducing peptide that also influences growth hormone secretion. While these peptides can effectively increase growth hormone levels, they may also cause side effects like increased hunger, anxiety, and cortisol levels. While peptides like BPC-157 and thymosin beta-4 have shown promising results in animal studies for tissue rejuvenation and repair, there are still some risks and considerations to keep in mind. One of the main concerns is the potential for these peptides to promote tumor growth, especially in individuals with existing tumors or cancer. Peptides that increase angiogenesis, such as BPC-157, may inadvertently stimulate tumor growth, making them unsuitable for individuals with cancer or tumor concerns. It is also essential to consider the sourcing and dosing of peptides, as purity and dosage can vary between suppliers. Taking the minimal effective dose and monitoring for any adverse effects is crucial when using peptides for tissue rejuvenation and repair. When considering the use of synthetic peptides to enhance growth hormone levels, it is crucial to work with a qualified physician who can provide guidance on dosing and potential risks. Combining different peptides in a cocktail may offer synergistic effects, but careful monitoring of hormone levels and side effects is essential to avoid adverse outcomes. While synthetic peptides can offer benefits in terms of vitality and energy, they also come with potential risks and side effects. 
Common side effects of growth hormone supplementation include carpal tunnel syndrome, changes in body structure, and increased tumor growth risk. It is important to weigh the benefits against the risks and consult with a healthcare provider before embarking on peptide therapy. One category of peptides that Huberman explores is growth hormone secretagogues. These peptides, such as serel and telin, are known for their ability to elevate growth hormone levels in the body. While some individuals may use these compounds to aid in injury recovery, it's essential to consider the potential trade-offs between benefits and risks. Huberman highlights the importance of being informed about the potential risks associated with growth hormone secretagogues. While these compounds are FDA approved, they are not approved for all purposes, such as cosmetic effects. It's crucial for individuals considering these peptides to assess their age, potential health conditions, and the minimal effective dose to minimize risks. Another category of peptides discussed by Huberman is longevity peptides, with a focus on epitalon. Epitalon is a synthetic peptide designed to mimic a naturally occurring peptide released from the pineal gland. Studies suggest that epitalon may have anti-inflammatory effects, increase telomere length, and recalibrate circadian rhythms, potentially contributing to longevity. While epitalon shows promise in animal studies, there is limited clinical evidence supporting its use for extending life in humans. Huberman emphasizes the need for caution when considering longevity peptides and the importance of consulting with a healthcare professional before incorporating them into a wellness regimen. Peptides related to melanocyte-stimulating hormone, such as melanotan and PT-141, are known for their effects on mood and libido. These peptides activate melanocytes in the skin, leading to pigmentation, while also influencing psychological and appetite-related pathways. PT-141 in particular is FDA-approved for treating hypoactive sexual desire in women. Huberman discusses the potential side effects of vitality peptides, including nausea, flushing, and increased blood pressure. Individuals with melanoma should exercise caution when using these peptides due to their effects on melanocytes. Additionally, kispeptin, a peptide involved in reproductive hormone pathways, may also play a role in enhancing vitality and libido. As the field of peptide therapeutics continues to evolve, Huberman underscores the importance of understanding the pleiotropic effects of peptides. While peptides offer exciting potential for improving physical and mental health, they also carry risks and side effects that must be carefully considered. Huberman encourages individuals interested in peptide therapeutics to work with board-certified physicians, monitor their health closely, and prioritize clean sourcing of peptides. While peptides hold promise for various health benefits, including injury recovery, longevity, and vitality enhancement, it's essential to approach their use with caution and informed decision-making.